Welcome to the LIT Chats. Uh, my own name is David Reedy and I'm working in the marketing office here in LIT. I'm delighted to be joined by Marion Geary, who works in the Department of Sport, Leisure and Tourism. Marion, you, you lecture in the course in the sport courses in My Leash. You're, you're very welcome and thanks a million for joining me today. Hi, David. Yeah, no problem. Delighted to be here. Um, yeah, I'm working and lecturing on the sports courses specifically um, in the Department of Sport, Leisure and Tourism. So happy to answer um, any questions that you have. Marion, I suppose we'll just kick straight on into it. Uh, can you give us a, a flavour of, I suppose, what courses you lecture in and a, a quick overview of the courses, please? Yeah, no problem. So currently we have, I suppose, two predominant courses um, in the sports department. Uh, firstly, we have the level eight in um, business studies with sports management, um, and that's a full kind of level eight Abinicio programme, but it also has um, level six and level seven embedded awards so that if students want to exit at level six or seven, you know, they can do so. Um, and then our second program is level seven in sports development and performance. Um, and again, there's an embedded level six um, award. And I suppose some really exciting news is that um, we've currently had our level eight um, validated on that program as well. So while this year's students can't apply for their level eight as such, you know, if they if they apply for their level seven, they can they can then you know hopefully transfer onto a level eight in four years time. So that's that's really exciting news. So I suppose to give you a, um, a little bit of a flavour for both, um, if we go back to the sports um, the business studies with sports management um, program, um, that's kind of based around kind of three key streams, um, David, in terms of the I suppose the the topics that we cover. So we have a kind of a sport and health stream. We have a business stream and we have a professional and kind of personal development stream. So our, our modules are centered around those kind of three key teams or streams. Um, so we'd be looking at on the sports side, we'd be looking at things like sports development and sports coaching, health, you know, well-being, nutrition, anatomy and physiology, kind of sports events. They'd be running practical sports events. Um, on the business side, then there's a kind of a wide range of topics like accounting, economics, um, you know, management, marketing, um, financial and business management. Um, so all of those kind of and leadership. Um, so then if we're looking on the, the level seven, then again, we have it centered around kind of four key teams, I suppose, or streams of, of topics. And they will be on the development, performance and coaching side would be one key team. Health and fitness would be the second, business and management would be the third, and then that professional and personal development um, would be the fourth. And I suppose the difference between this program is that it's predominantly, I suppose, sports orientated um, and it's, it's focusing on um, sports development, sports coaching and then sports performance as well. So it's, it's um, I suppose, more focused on the sports side than the other program. So they're kind of the, the key overviews. Um, and I suppose the, just a, a quick question, you you mentioned that there was level six and level seven and level eight, and I suppose in uh, business studies and sports management, two students coming in first year in, in September, one starts at level six on, on his CEO and one starts at level eight. Will they both be in the same classroom or learn the same modules or are they kind of separated? No, David, um, if they come in on a level six or a level seven or a level eight on the same program, they would be in the same classroom. You know, they would have the same lectures, the same timetable. Um, I suppose all that would be different is that they've specified that they want to exit maybe, you know, after second year or third year. And, you know, even if they did come in on a level six and they decided maybe after second year that they'd like to progress, that option is also there for them. So they're not limited to just staying on that level six program, they can then progress to level seven and level eight. Um, Excellent. If so Excellent. So there's pathways all through to, to get to your level eight, eight degree, if so desired. Um, Absolutely. And I suppose in terms of the actual course content itself, like students are looking like their, their sports core or sports uh, modules on it. Are these practical elements of the course or are they done in a lecture hall or, or what percentage even uh, if you could give us a, a rough percentage of the practicality of the courses versus the lecture side of it? Okay, um, I suppose in terms of 
just the breakdown between practical and tutorial, for the most part, you know, if you have a module, it's generally what we call a two plus two or a two plus one. And what that means is that you'd have two lectures or two tutorials or two practicals. Um, and it depends on the nature of the subject. So say, for example, if I had a coaching module, for example, the likelihood is, is that you would only have one lecture and you could have three practical sessions a week on the coaching module, whereas, and, and obviously that would be a really practical based um, module. And then you might have modules like um, our event management, I mentioned that, whereby again, you might have one session a week that's in the classroom that isn't even lecture based, it's really looking at organization. And then you could have three hours again out on the ground organizing events. Then you might have a subject like sports psychology, which would be a little bit more um, theory based. And again, you'd have probably two lectures and two tutorials. And again, the tutorials would be based around practical solve, you know, problem solving and that. So um, the likelihood is, David, is that you would have no more than kind of a 50-50 split. And in some instances, you know, you'd have, you know, more practical than 50 percent. You know, you could have 60 or 70 percent practical, depending on how the modules are arranged. But obviously, as it's it's a, their sports programs, any of the sports modules would be a lot more practical. Um, what I would say maybe about the business studies program is that, you know, there are a lot more business modules there that wouldn't lend themselves, uh, you know, obviously to kind of practical work as, as such. And in, in that sense, again, what you would probably have is your two lectures, two tutorials or, you know, that kind of breakdown. So you still wouldn't be stuck in a lecture hall for four hours a week. You would still have that kind of practical tutorial base a um, couple of hours a week as well on those business modules. So it's not certainly not going to be sitting in lecture halls, you know, for, for lots of your week. It is very practical. Um, and certainly on the sports side, it's as practical as we can make it. Excellent. And I suppose just a quick question on that. Um, a student coming in with maybe not so much a sport background or maybe haven't experienced in coach, this coaching side of things, but wants to go into that field of work or vice versa, that maybe hasn't done the likes of accounting before. Is there a base level that they need to reach before they come into LIT in first year or are we starting on a blank canvas in, in first year? Yeah, I suppose, um, David, it's it's essentially it is a blank canvas in the sense that, you know, we've had students come in that haven't a background in maybe either area. Um, so a lot of our first year, I suppose, programs essentially would be very much um, based around, you know, students that, that might not have that background. and haven't been in school in maybe 20 years and have still managed to come in and, and sit those modules because you know in LIT as well what we would have is we know our students very well you know we have smaller class sizes we get to know the students um, kind of intimately as such so that if students are having problems you know we're, we're aware of them or we you know assuming that students come to us and you know we can ask questions as well maybe based around what their results are coming through as but you know, we're very aware of where students are at um, and we do get to know them quite well. So, you know, that's really is a bonus here that um, the small class sizes mean that, you know, it's rare that a student who, who is struggling wouldn't, you know, be brought to our attention at some point. So um, you know, that's a real benefit. And there are also additional supports, um, you know, student services um, offer support and, and grinds in, in subjects that would help them along as well. But to come back to your original question, you know, essentially, and even on the sporting side, these are predominantly kind of introductory modules in first year to get students into the, you know, just get them into that way of thinking. And, and um, essentially, you don't have to have a background um, in either area, um, you know, to satisfy the requirements here. Excellent. I suppose I'll just move on to during, during the two or three or four years in, in, the, in the course. Um, is there placement opportunities? Um, for a semester in, in both courses, the business sport management and the sports development and performance? Yeah, um, there's been a placement on, on both courses, I suppose, since their inception. And it's it's generally the, the second semester of third year um, that okay. the students go on placement. So they have to satisfy a minimum of 600 hours. Um, now, that placement can be at home or it can be abroad. And there's also an Erasmus option as well to, to work or study abroad as well. So um, it's it's really, you know, expanded in terms of where students can go. Um, so I suppose on the business, on the business studies with sports management side, 
um, there's probably a wider range of, of options in terms of where they can go in placement purely because they have the business and the sports background and they can kind of merge the two or, or decide to go, you know, separately, either go on the sports route or on the business route. Um, usually on the sports development and performance side, students tend to go the, the route of, you know, maybe coaching or they go into sports development or into even youth work or um, they might go into the governing bodies or, or the sports partnerships, but they generally do go the sporting road, um, you know, on that placement option. But yeah, it's probably the most, um, I think, impactful module on the course. Um, and it's one that, that students really mature in and they generally come back, you know, well set up for future. Um, so yeah, it's a really good opportunity for students. And how do students find placement? Are, are they are they helped by LIT or is it they go off and have to get something themselves? OK, so in our um, both our courses, um, essentially what we would have is what's called a placement coordinator who would be the lecturer um, who is over placement for either of the courses. Um, students um, with their help, I suppose, with the coordinator's help, have to find their own placement. Um, and we found that's really um, has been really useful in that students learn kind of softer skills around, you know, approaching companies, approaching different people, getting their CV set up. Um, and also it gives them choice. You know, they can actually look at their options and they can see um, where it is they'd like to go. They're not limited to maybe being placed or having a couple of options. They really the world is their oyster in terms of where they can go. And um, for some students, it's a difficult thing to put yourself out there. Um, but I don't think we've ever had a student come back and and you know bemoan the fact that they had to find their own. In actual fact, it's been one of the the comments that has been about the the placement was that all students felt it was the best thing for them. That number one, they had to put themselves out there, and number two, they got placements that they really wanted um, because they were given the opportunity to to kind of look beyond maybe what the college might offer them. Um, so yeah, students find their own placement um, and. As I said, they do have support and they do have guidance and help from the placement coordinator. And once they go on placement, if there are any issues, um, each student is then assigned a placement supervisor. Um, so, for example, I'm a supervisor this year to 12 students. Um, so if they have any issues around finding placement, especially with COVID, or if they have any issues on placement, um, you know, they can come to me. Um, and on top of that, I would also um, have a placement visit with them to make sure that everything is going going OK as well. Um, so that's kind of the support that they would get during placement then over the kind of four or five months. Excellent. And I suppose just further on from that, then I suppose they come back into fourth year, hopefully complete and get their level eight degree. And then I suppose it's into the big bad world and looking for employment and um, I suppose opportunities. But what are the opportunities when having a degree in, in both courses? Yeah, so the opportunities have actually been really kind of far reaching as well. And I suppose to go back to placement, a lot of our students actually find employment on placement. They go into, you know, they make connections, they they go into jobs and placement. And, and a lot of the time, you know, these, these students having done really well and worked really hard, come back and they have a job secured for fourth year. And so that placement is a really good um, kind of networking opportunity as well. But in terms of the, the areas that they go into, I suppose if we just take on the sports side um, in terms of both the business studies and sports management and sports development and performance, the kind of sports industries that they go into would be they might go into the governing bodies. They might go into local sports partnerships. Some of them have actually gone on and, and opened their own businesses. Um, whether it be in coaching or, or gymnastics or, or the leisure um, leisure centres. Um, some, a lot of our students now are going into sports analysis. Um, a number of our students are in postgraduate studies and they've gone on to do masters by research or taught masters. Um, some go into working with youth services, guarded diversion projects. Um, some go into coaching roles. Um, with you know, with intercounty or, or national or you know teams abroad, we have students who are in in coaching roles in in rugby and and soccer abroad. Um, on the business side, then in terms of where I suppose students go, um, you know, we have students that go into marketing, they go into HR. We have a number of just like yourself, you know, into into LIT. They've come back into us in LIT. We have a number of students actually in different departments. Um, across LIT, so that's really good. Um, just recently, we had a student who was accepted onto the masters, the teaching masters. 
Um, so he's hoping to become a business studies teacher. Um, we have students then that will go into retail. They might go into accountancy. Some have gone into pharmaceuticals, into manufacturing. The list is really endless, David. I could go on and on. Um, and, you know, different students go on and they do very different um, things with their degree. But certainly in terms of employment opportunities, they haven't had issues finding employment. Um, and I suppose what we've always found is that students that work really hard and, and do well in fourth year, particularly, you know, generally find employment in the areas that they want to want to go into. So um, it is wide, wide ranging That's the opportunities are there. That's the thing, like you named out a couple of different industries and different um, aspects that, that they can go into. And I suppose that's the benefit of having a degree in, in, in either uh, course, that there is loads of options out there. Um, and I suppose if, if, if you want to continue studying, there is to come back and do, do a master's or, or even furthering from, from that. But um, the, the, the kind of, I suppose the opportunities are nearly endless, um, which is great to hear. Yeah. Uh, and as I said, placement can very often be that springboard for students to to kind of make those connections. Um, Big time. Yeah. Uh, I suppose I won't keep you too much longer. Just, I suppose, a, a quick question on if, if a student is thinking of either course, have you any tips or maybe advice for the student? Yeah. So I suppose what we find um, on the, the business studies with sports management is that very often um, a lot of the students on that course actually have a greater affinity towards the business side, um, but have a good and nice, strong interest in sport as well. Um, now, that's not to say that we haven't had, you know, students here or there that are interested in the sports side and want that kind of business, that business extra, if you know what I mean. Um, you know, we, we have had students that are, 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 you know, sports enthusiasts, but just don't want to maybe work in that area on its own. They want to have, they might want to go into sports business and, you know, that side of things so I suppose if you if you are business orientated um, and you you know you like sport as an option as well and vice versa the business studies you know is really the program for you and if you're just business orientated you know most of our students you know really enjoy it um, and they like that sport element it's a very different um, they're two very different kind of bedfellows so um, from the business study side you know that tends to be where our students come from on the sports side then again you know if you're interested in sport, if you're interested in sports development and using sport as a tool for, for development and the performance side, again, this is a really nice springboard. Our students that come in um, that are interested in coaching, you know, really um, develop really well on this program. Um, and as I said, we've improved the program this year. It, we've just undergone a programmatic review actually across both programs, um, and we feel we've improved them in line with what's happening in industry. So this, on the sports side, it really is a really nice, broad, um, but well-balanced program around that kind of sports development, sports coaching, and moving on to that sports performance team as well. So they would be the kind of students that you know traditionally would have come onto our programs. And as you said there, like LIT are following what industry wants um, and what in industry needs. So they're working their programs to satisfy what something to, to I suppose a job down the line for, for the students which is which is excellent to hear as well. Yeah absolutely we've just had our, our programmatic review and we've had our, our validation events and on those panels um, David we've had six or eight industry experts that have come in and, and reviewed the programs and you know have given us their input as well so you know we're always trying to, to stay in contact with industry and see what's happening and, and whether or not we are satisfying what they're looking for so absolutely yeah it's really important. Excellent, Marion. I suppose I'll, I'll wrap it up now. Thanks a million once again for taking the time out of your day to, to answer a couple of questions. And I suppose if any student that's listening um, has a question that we didn't get or didn't answer, you can send us an email at schools at lit.ie and one of our team or Marion herself will get back to you um, ASAP. Um, again, thanks a million, Marion, and really appreciate taking the time for us.